Hi, it's me again, and I'm back with another laser build that I've made a couple of months ago, but I never had the time to put this video together until this evening. So, this laser that I'll be showing you today is a 445 nanometer, uh, which is blue by the way, um, 9 millimeter diode that puts out between 2.5 and 3 watts of power. Unfortunately, I haven't got a laser power meter, but most people say that this diode puts out at least 2.8 watts, which is uh, incredibly powerful. So, before we get into that, let me just um, show you this other product. Now, this here is a very, very good uh, pair of eye protection goggles. It's made by a company called Eagle Pair and it doesn't cost very much um, in comparison with uh, the amount of money you'd be spending on building uh, lasers if you're getting to the hobby. Now if you're going to get one of these I suggest getting this model because if you look at the I'll try to focus, if you look at the wavelength of light that it protects against it actually covers infrared it's not very clear, I do apologize for that there we go, so it actually covers 190 nanometer to 540 nanometers so that should cover you when dealing with ultraviolet, blu-ray blue lasers and also uh, it should also cover you in the um, infrared uh, range of wavelengths as well so um, yeah don't mess around with one of these high powered lasers uh, if you're not sure what you're doing because um, when you when you use anything over Oh, over one watt I would say um, or even uh, 500 milliwatts they can be very very dangerous and I've known a lot of accidents that uh, have happened to other more unfortunate people and they've gotten into um, some problems and they have damages to their eyes and all that so it's just not worth uh, taking the risk okay so um, this is obviously an Oakley uh, spectacle case from my old pair of glasses um, it's a perfect uh, case to keep my uh, new laser built in alright so here we go so this here is a sky ray I'm just going to change the focus so you can work on this from now on sorry let me just manually focus this camera oh. getting better alright that's much better so this here is um, it was originally a white LED uh, flashlight um, it's been modified to hold one of these aluminium blocks um, in which you can mount a 5.6 millimeter or 9 millimeter uh, diode um, module, axis module to, to be more specific so I'm just going to open it up to show you what I mean right so that comes off there this top bit here was originally um, the lens and the white LED uh, module and drivers for the flashlight uh, but obviously that's been changed to this machine aluminium block so if I remove this you can see just um, silicon wires in here to connect this to the uh, the rest of the hose now the, uh, the body is obviously um, negative so um, there's no uh, negative wire needed um, so yeah, that that is just uh, the black wire just soldered to the the edge of the 
uh, module. All right. I need, I'm going to use, uh, need to use two hands to um, get this back in, so bear with me a second. Okay, now the module that I've got in here is a copper axis module with, uh, with the G2 glass lens. Um, you can read, I'll, I'll post the, the, the links to, to where you can purchase this, um, this, all these items, the hose, the, the module, the actual laser diode, the, the glass lens and um, what else, the, the power driver board that goes inside and stuff like that. Um, so basically if you're going to build one of these 445 nanometer blue lasers then you want to use either the, the G2 glass lens or something called a three, uh, three element glass lens. Um, I think they both have their pros and cons but uh, I, I chose to go with the G2 um, for uh, various reasons and you can read up on the pros and cons of both of them in the links that I'll be uh, posting in the description uh, below this video so do check them out um, so uh, let me give you some information on this diode this is uh, once again a 9mm laser diode in the 445 nanometer range and that puts out uh, about 2.8 watts these diodes um, no one actually knows uh, the make of these diodes and no one actually has a reliable uh, spec sheet because obviously you don't, if you don't know the, the, the make and model of the diode then it's um, it's going to be impossible to uh, find an accurate uh, specification sheet for it but what I do know is that these diodes are used to illuminate DLP projectors so um, one way to get this diode is to to find um, a DLP computer projector that's actually illuminated by this diode um, purchase the projector and extract these laser diodes out of the projector that's going to cost a lot of money or Alternatively, you can buy just the diode from someone who does the exact um, same thing. And once again, you can you can buy it from um, the link that I'll be posting in the description below this video. So let me just go ahead and reassemble everything here so I can power it up. And by the way, I've lubricated all the uh, O-rings, all the rubber O-rings with a uh, grease called Dupont Crytox, which is the best uh, silicon-based grease to use if you're going to um, LED flashlights, lasers, and stuff like that. Um, so, okay, this um, this hose will take uh, a one eight three five zero battery or the um, we'll take two of them or it will take a single um, what's the other one called one six five five oh I believe it is um, battery uh, let me just go and get that just to confirm what model it is sorry it's one one eight six five zero which is um, I believe what the hose was originally designed to uh, accommodate but um, obviously if you use just one battery it's going to put out just 3.7 volts and we're going to need um, about twice the amount to drive this uh, laser so I've stacked two of these 18350 batteries together now one problem you may face when you use these batteries uh, is that the the ends are flat, so they are quite um, they're quite flush. So sometimes if you put them together, they don't really make a good contact. So therefore, um, what I've done is I've um, added uh, a neodymium magnet here, um, so that kind of protrudes out just a little bit. 
um, I can't remember the thickness of this, but it's the thinnest one you can find on eBay. So just search for neodymium um, mag magnet uh, disc and find the just purchase the thinnest one that you can get um, that you can find. So um, the other advantage is that it, it holds the battery together like that. Right. So I'm going to um, pop that in. And if you notice from the uh, at the start of my video, um, I don't store the batteries in the unit itself, um, just for safety reasons, because I don't want these to come on accidentally while it's in storage, uh, because that could be um, very, very dangerous. And the other safety measure that I have is uh, I use one of these glow-in-the-dark um, lens cap protectors that you can buy on the internet as well. Uh, you can find them quite easily. So if I turn this on, you can see it's um, kind of glow in the dark. So continue glowing. All right. So let's have a look at this laser beam. Let me just get the focus corrected again, and then show you just how powerful this laser beam is. So as you can see with the high power of this laser, uh, the beam is actually visible even indoors, which is um, really, really amazing. And um, I'm going to get something just to do a demonstration. So if you've seen my other laser build videos, you you know that uh, with most of the other lasers, they have to be focused at a, at a, at a spot to burn uh, something. Um, but with this one, as as you already seen, it's it's focused at infinity. It's not sp spot focused at all, and with infinity focus, this one is able to burn um, stuff, which I shall demonstrate. So here's a black piece of tissue paper. You can see that brown spot there. Um, I've burned that uh, with this laser a couple of weeks ago. And now I'm going to hold this laser about, uh, about a meter away. And I'm going to turn it on now. So you can see it just burn created those burn marks and smoke the uh, piece of paper almost instantly. And the other thing about this, you can still see the traces of smoke. The other thing about this laser is um, that it doesn't only really burn dark colored objects like that, it, it, it burns light colored objects like this uh, wooden uh, table very easily as well. And I shall uh, demonstrate that. So this here is a light colored wood surface, wooden surface. Um, it's, it's basically a storage shelf and I'm going to walk back about um, three meters from where it is. And I'm going to focus the camera once again. Okay, now I'm going to turn the laser on at this distance and once again, it's focused at infinity. I'm going to try to burn um, the, the the surface. So if I shine it there, you can see the smoke that's coming off it, and new burn marks have been created. So, yeah, once again, this laser is very very powerful. So do not uh, use it without protection unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. Um, and yeah, there it is. I've got to stop this video now because it's coming up to 15 minute maximum duration. Um, I'm not sure what the duty cycle of, of these units are, but um, because they cost a lot to, to build, I, I wouldn't keep them on for more than half a minute. 
at a time. Um, and once again, please use this responsibly if you're going to play around with it. Um, oh, yeah, let's focus. Um, and yeah, once again, you can purchase the parts that you need to build this um, laser from the links below. Um, from a, a very, um, very friendly gentleman nicknamed DTR from Laser Pointer Forums. And if you want to look for me on the forums, my nickname is Cyclonite. So, um, yep, all the best to, to you if you um, want to venture into building one of these. Okay, I just want to mention two things very quickly that I left out in the video earlier. If you're going to use this, uh, uh, two of these 18350 batteries together, it's going to be a little bit too long to use in this. Uh, Skyray hose um, with its uh, or in its original configuration, so you're gonna have to modify the spring in the end cap. You're gonna have to cut it short, uh, shorter, and to do that, you're gonna need a pair of pliers, a, a Dremel tool, and some other um, e equipment like maybe a, a vise to hold things, hold on to things while you work on on them. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is the power uh, supply driver that I'm using in this unit is called the X Drive. That once again can be purchased at the links posted below this video.